welcome into the studio. Thanks for coming by today. We are going to be working on some faceted pots. Uh, nothing too large. We're going to be doing some bowls and maybe some like hand cups. You can call them whatever you want, little whiskey sippers, tea bowls, or tea cups. Uh, so just kind of things without handles. These pieces are going to be going into a wood firing that I got invited to. Very excited about that. So we're working with a different clay uh, for this wood fire. We'll use a few different types of clay, but I bought this clay like two years ago in hopes that I'd be doing a wood firing, and now we are. So this is uh, B mix wood fire clay. That's what we're using today. Kind of like a white stoneware. Hopefully, it'll get a lot of good flashing. So these are the pots that we're going to be working on. This one is done out of porcelain with the Achan glaze. These are thrown very thickly and we cut pieces off. So that's what the faceting is. Think of it as like, you know, gemstones, kind of the same thing with pots. We're cutting sections off to create faces on here. And uh, yeah, they kind of remind me of rocks and uh, they have a nice organic fluid motion. And there's, there's just a lot of fun to do. Uh, there's, there's just seems to be endless amounts of different ways that we can do it. Uh, and they'll get a trim foot. All these will get a nice trim foot. There are ways to do some of these without doing trim foot, but uh, I like doing that. And then last night I was up thinking in bed about different ways to facet pots. So we're going to try one of those and we'll see if it works or not. So that'll be, that'll be interesting. We're going to be using one and a quarter pounds of clay, and you know any clay is good. I just do it in on porcelain, nice, smooth, really clean faces on there. If you use a really groggy clay or sandy clay, you get all these nice, this nice rough texture on there. And uh, you know, so any clay seems to work pretty well for it. We've got our two sponges, regular sponge, makeup sponge. We have a little kidney rib here for compressing the bottom. You can do it with your thumb too. A nice hard rib for uh, making a straight side. You could also do the side of your uh, wooden knife if you wanted to, just a little wooden knife. And we have two different fastening tools I'm going to be using. Now you can just use a cutoff wire to do it. Whenever I do that, I have a hard time keeping the cut even, like without it going in and out. And uh, I tend to get thin spots that don't work quite as well for me. We have this regular little cheese cutter here. I think this is even just the regular uh, wire that's on there. This one's adjustable. You can crank it to make it thinner or thicker. And that'll, that'll change the look on everything. And then there's this tool. Let's see, I got this from another potter. I don't know if he sells them or not. Uh, you can check on his website. He has a lot of good tools, Bill Van Gilder, but just another type of faceting tool. So that's what we got going on here. We'll get started. And today, I'm gonna try to move the camera in a little bit closer so we can get a better look at how we're making these cuts and how we're setting things up. So just give me a minute here. Sorry if it gets wobbly. We're just going to come around here, kind of a little bit more into my point of view. to be able to see how I do all my facets. We have been, we have been putting these videos up on YouTube to kind of preserve them. If you want to check them out there, it's just under Hickory Flat Pottery. All right. Got to wiggle that on there. And here we go. When you're working with, with these facets, remember that how much clay you plan on taking off with each one and you can facet these freshly thrown like I'm doing or you can wait till they're set up to about cheese hard and then do it uh, you get two different looks that way but you want the walls to be very very even when you're doing this otherwise you'll get a weak spot when you're trying to, to flare it out a little bit all right so we're starting with the bowl when I'm going to trim a foot on these pieces, and this is kind of the way that I learned to throw bowls, you really start out with a, with a doorknob shape, so kind of already a bevel under here. I'm going to go down, leave enough space for a nice trimmed foot. And 
This will be a bowl. So we're going to start out with the inside kind of rounded. This is a bit of a finer clay than my stoneware that I usually use. If this was a stoneware, I'd already be done compressing. I would say that I've had enough uh, with the finer clay that are more apt to cracking. I'll come back in and compress it one or two more times. Now the shape that you start out with is really going to affect the finished piece. The wider it is that you start out with, uh, I feel like you, you kind of maintain the structure of the cuts a little bit more. If you start out really skinny and do it, they spread out a little bit more, but uh, you still get these nice lines involved in all of it. So this first one, is a Simon Levin tulip bowl, as he calls it. That's what we're doing with this one. We're going to do a really nice big bevel. Make sure this top stays plenty thick. The bottom's going to come out, and it's going to come up and straight. Very thick. And you will end up cutting through when you're working with these. You'll, you will make a mistake at some point. No big deal. I still cut through them sometimes. It's hard to find a nice balance between uh, on the weight. Uh, I don't know what it is. Whenever I have a faceted pot, I feel like it, uh, it's kind of earned its way to have a little bit more weight to it. But you don't want them to be too heavy. I think if they get too thin, uh, they, they feel out of place when you pick them up. All right, so we have a nice dry, straight surface that we're working on. You can try it doing curved, do whatever you want. This is just how we're doing it today. Oh yeah. All right, so for his, we're gonna start out with a triangle. So we're pushing down, out, trying to, we're gonna make three large facets, one on each face and then one on each corner. So we're gonna start up by already shaping it into a bit of a triangle there. And we will try to paddle these into a little bit more of a triangle shape. We just have a wooden paddle here. Dry surface, wet paddle. Sorry for the noise. That's the other phone going off. All right, we're really trying to make big straight surfaces on there. So we got that. Now we're gonna wet our uh, little cheese cutter here. Let's give this a shot. Okay, so we're gonna start, for these ones we're gonna start at the top, move down and then pull that off. When you do these, make a nice fluid motion all the way down. You don't want to really hesitate. I like to take each slice off and take it off the pot each time I do it. And like I was saying, you know, you can just hold your wire and go down if you'd like. That works well for some people. I have a hard time with it. And I feel the first one of these is not usually the best. It kind of takes a few times to get into a nice rhythm. I'm going to pick this little thing off later. I don't want to mess with it right now. Okay, so we made all these facets and we don't have any thrown surfaces on here. 
right? They're all cut surfaces. So that's what we're looking for. I'm gonna get it really, really slow. And I like to come in and very gently soften this edge, just a touch. All right. Now we're gonna, so we have this shape. Uh, in my opinion, it doesn't, it doesn't have much movement, kind of static, not too much fun right now. But we do have these nice faces. We can't touch this surface anymore, but we can alter the form with our fingers on the inside of the piece. Now I am going to be trimming the pot from about this part down for the foot. So I will support my finger under here as I'm bellying this out. It helps create the nice inside shape and uh, keeps it from collapsing. So I can touch any part that I plan on trimming. Get a little water in here. When I'm, when I'm uh, bellying this out, I'll use the pad of my finger, like this whole section of my finger, more than just the point. If I just do the point, I'm gonna create these lines going up, which uh, I, I think contrast in a poor way with the lines that we created going up. I don't like having all these little throwing lines in there. So you can even use a, a rib, you know, to help do this up to get a nice, looking for this bottom to kind of belly out and then come up. Maybe I'll stretch this top part out just a little bit for fun. So we all like to have fun. And you'll start to feel when you've gone too far. Side finger. Now you may be asking yourself, what good is this bowl with this shape? What is it used for? Uh, honestly, I don't really know. They're just pretty. Put little candies or something in there. I'll let you figure that one out. I usually start everything out with a purpose, and then the form follows function, but the, occasionally I'm just making something pretty. You could even drink out of this thing. Um, I bet you could eat ice cream out of it, have a small dessert. I'll just create a little bevel down there for my wire to follow through, and now we'll stop and kind of look at it. What do we think of the shape going on here? I think I like the movement with all of it. I see like this little shadow kind of running right through here. I don't know if I like that. I'm gonna to try to get it spinning once more and see if we can kind of get rid of that line there. slowly and just barely soften that edge up. I like the sharpness of this line along with these ones. I just don't want it too fragile. All right, that's successful enough there. This is all pretty dry. It's all pretty thick. If I really support it under here, where I'm gonna be trimming all that clay off of, uh, you can pick it up pretty easily. Just clean up your fingers so it doesn't get all messy. That top has a little bit of a, kind of a jive to it. That's fun.
Uh, so we're going to try out a few different ideas. We're not just going to be making the same piece over and over, although I may make a few more of these later. Uh, maybe we'll do three, three more pieces here and see where it gets us. This next one, I'm going to alter it the same way. I'm going to leave the rim in a slightly different configuration and uh, we'll see the difference there on uh, something subtle as that and we'll, we'll make the top just a little bit different. So these are just slight variations to it and hopefully we'll see some good differences in aesthetic values and maybe functional values as well. Nice and thick bottom, compressing, rounded. And it's very important when you're throwing these that the clay is even, which is more difficult than it sounds. Because it's a, it's a small piece and you want the clay to be the same thickness this whole way. Usually you kind of uh, execute that later on uh, after a few pulls. It's so easy to get these too thin. Because you've been, you've been working so long at moving all this clay and not having all this weight everywhere. So we're going to create that bevel underneath come out wide on the bottom and straight up. Now this top, the last one, we had a bit of a bevel to it. This one, we're going to do it straight, nice and flat. Straighten this out. So that last one I paddled, this one we'll do with uh, some boards, I have masonite boards and these ones are, <laughs> these things are huge, they should be of like a quarter of this size for this to really work and uh, when you get these they'll have, uh, you, you cut them up, there's a rough side and a smooth side or a fuzzy side, we're going to work on the fuzzy side. So we'll take this, maybe right there, and push it to try to create our corners. You can kind of squeeze in that corner. And you can do this in a square a triangle. So last night I was thinking about just having two sides, right? So just squishing it flat and then doing facets like that. So that's one of them that we're going to try and we're just going to see what happens. All right. So we have that this time. Come in and clean up our tool. If it gets stuck, you can use a little needle tool to pick it off. And I'll worry about trying to get that off later when it's leather hard and I come to trim the bottom. If I do it now, I'm going to muck everything up. Sometimes it's hard to leave those things alone because they're distracting. You want it gone now. Have to be a little patient. Got our three sides, now our corners. That one got a little funky, a little air pocket in there. 
No, I cut all the way through it. See? Sometimes you cut all the way through the piece. Let's try it again. So depending on the thickness of your facets, you can easily cut off more than you were expecting. Get this centered and try again. Pressing a little bit more than stoneware, a little bit less than I would with porcelain. This clay is definitely more forgiving than porcelain. All right, so even thicker this time. Got a little too high on that one. There we go. A little bit shorter. triangle shape. Try this again. May have made it too thin again. We'll see. You can see you know, I was trying to do it nice and even, but you still kind of get some ripples in there. It's always something to work through. Still a little bit of thrown surface on there. We'll just go with it. Started off the same way with just a flat top. We're kind of shooting the same general shape. As far as the body of this goes, where it's wider at the, the bottom half and then just kind of comes in. Now don't mind all of this stuff down here. It can kind of get distracting, like you want to clean it up, but you know, that's all gonna come off in trimming. You know, none of this happens right away. I'm gonna come in here and try to smooth out the bottom a little bit. That got a little roughed up. You could put a little swirl in there if you wanted to. Okay, so we can just do that, flip that off. Now we could stop there, a little bit more pointy there. One thing I'm going to do is just a little bit different, I'm just going to 
to smooth this over a touch. Doesn't really matter what tool we use. So I'm just going to lay this rib over the edge and kind of fold it over. So now it's kind of the opposite angle that we did with the other one. The other one had a bevel in, this one has a bevel out. You can see it's a, definitely a different shape on there. All right. I'll come in and smooth some of these really rough edges out when I come to trim the pot. Really, really thick piece. You can pick it up pretty easily. But that's a different. That's a different rim shape on that one. Compared to. Compared to this one. So I feel like they have. Much different. Feel. To each one. And that's just kind of simple little variation to it. Now we'll do something a little bit, a little bit taller. We're not going to angle this one, right? We're not going to flatten the edges up. And we'll just get the the number of facets that we get, and we'll see what that looks like. And it'll be your discretion as to what kind of top goes on there. Is it something that's going to get folded down? Is it beveled in? No right or wrong. You're making anything, you know, there's so many, so many variations to it. So, I mean, we're doing something that people have been doing for a long, 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 long time. But there's all these little subtleties you can do to it to kind of make it your own. Especially what's going to work for your glazes, your values as a potter. Are you just looking for this looks, or is it form and function together? So we're going to go a little bit taller with this one. last two were wider than they are tall. I want this one to be taller than wide. I'm going to start off pretty skinny. Go from there. All done throwing. I'm just trying to get this straightened out and even now. Just a little thin. We'll see. It doesn't take much for it to kind of disrupt everything. So, this is still a really thick rim. Just making an angle on here so this edge is thin. There's still a lot of clay up there. I'm gonna make a little kind of a stopping point there. And this one, normally with a shape like this, I would start at the bottom and come up. I don't know if it matters too much. We're going to start from the top and go down. And 
and then each facet slightly overlaps the last. I don't want the thrown surface on here. I clean this off every single time. And at the end, so now we're, we're, we're sitting here and you could try to do two small ones. We're gonna do hopefully one that'll, that'll cover the rest of this. And if we don't get that, then we're gonna have this little thin thrown surface on each side and it's not gonna look good. Uh, so we're just gonna, make it happen kind of push in a little bit harder if we have to there we go we'll get it going so this is a this is a time where wheel speed and water come into play quite a bit the faster i forget which one it is i know if you have drier hands it's gonna pull the clay a little bit and these will twist more. Uh, I'm not sure if the wheel speed matters so much on the twist, right? And you have dry fingers, dry inside. It's gonna grip it a little bit more. These are gonna to start to pull and twist. If you have more moisture in there and your hands are wet, you'll start, you can belly it out, but these will stay a little bit straighter. Uh, get the wheel going at a decent rate so it all blurs together. You can get an idea of what the shape is looking like. I just want an oval on this piece. Do your best not to touch the faceted parts. If you do, it's going to kind of ruin everything you've been working on. So it's almost a similar shape to the tulip bowl in different proportions. Now I did see a beautifully faceted pot that I've been keeping my eye on, just a picture of it, and I've never been able to execute it. And that's kind of what this one is being modeled after. Thin on the inside here, you can feel the bounces a little bit more. And that kind of means that it's getting thinned out. Now we're just going to try to even it all out. Get a nice even shape in here. And you'd be surprised at how much all the aesthetics change when you trim a foot on here big difference. Like I was saying, you can use a tool on the inside to, to get your shape that you want. Just using the length of our finger. Clean that up. A little undercut. And so that's what we got with that one. A little bit different. You can see it started to twist a little bit. We're gonna to try to belly it out just a little bit more. We're gonna push this one a little bit more of the limits on it. I want it to have more volume, a little too static. We're just gonna go for it. You could put the shape in here and have it nice and thick and then come in and do your facets after it's set up a little bit. You'll get a different look as well, which can be nice. All right, 
let's see what we have here now. We're going to go with that. Kind of nice wavy lines going through there. Okay, one last piece here. No idea if this is going to work at all. We're going to squish this as flat as we can and take really big facets out of it. We'll, we'll see what happens here. This is more, uh, this idea is more of kind of a, a jumping off point. And, uh, you know, we'll take five, ten pieces to work through this idea. Maybe figure something out by the end of it. Alright, so we're going to want to flip on here. We're going to start... See, this is where I don't know. Do we do wide? Or skinny? Where do we start? Gotta go in the middle. bevel going down into the pot. And I have no idea if I'm even going to be able to squish this between two boards the way I'm thinking I can. And then I'll probably try to facet it with one of my tools, but maybe it's better suited just for a big wire. These are all things that will take time to figure out. this squished together in half. There we go. Got our fuzzy sides. And I'm, I, this is what I'm thinking here. We're just going to take it and squish this whole thing together as much as possible. So something like that. And then try to square up that corner get in there. Not everything has to work. If you don't try, you'll never know. And you won't go to sleep again without thinking about it and wondering. See what happens here. All right, that should fit. And this may not be thick enough for what we're trying to do. kind of miss these edges there. Alright. So maybe we should have used just a wire to lop all that off. Just come in here and do little ones there. So we're going to end up with four more facets than I thought I wanted. Let's see what this looks like. This will be the last one. I'll play around with this idea and see where we get. Alright. 
now to open it up. There are fingers in here. And this is pretty goofy. What are we trying to do here? I'm not sure. I'm trying to put some sort of shape in there. Just something. Just get something. No clue of this all. <laughs> no idea if, the, if a trim foot will really work on here or if we'll have to add clay to make it happen or what. So, kind of looks like the same other things, but just wider faces. No idea what that foot will come out like. Maybe we'll post a picture after we get there. Try to smooth out the bottom of this. It's got a little crazy on the inside. So there we go. That was one idea that we worked through. Or, you know, made an attempt at. Maybe it's kind of nice having those three facets on each side. Going from the one big one to the three there. see how the inside kind of got it smoothed out so this foot is going to be interesting because it's so skinny we'll see if we can make anything that's actually functional and uh, so there's those three smaller facets and then the one big one so anyways that was that now we don't have to think about it as much and that's all we're doing for today. Thanks for watching, and hopefully we'll see you next week.